atoms want to lose electrons to achieve stability. Some metals are better at doing this than others. The order in which we have the metals which are easily losing the electrons at the top and the ones that find it more challenging at the bottom is known as the electrochemical series. So redox, what is it and how does it actually work? There's a little story that we use in chemistry to help us remember what is what. And the story we remember is oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. When we're given two different metals that have different positions in the electrochemical series, we identify those on page 10. The top one, the top equation will always flip. So we write it in the reverse of what is given on page 10 and that is known as an oxidation. And the bottom one will always stay the same, so we copy it directly from the data booklet, and that is known as a reduction. Remember, for an oxidation, the electrons will be found on the product side, and for a reduction, the electrons will be found on the reactant side. So let's take silver and lithium as an example. The first thing that we have to do is we have to use page 10 of our data booklets and identify the position of silver and lithium in the electrochemical series. Remember, the top one flips, so we take the lithium and we're going to rewrite the equation in the opposite way. So we'll have Li solid going to Li plus aqueous plus an electron. Remember, that is losing an electron, so that's known as oxidation. The bottom one remains the same, so we copy it exactly how it is in the data booklet. We have Ag plus aqueous plus an electron goes to Ag solid. And we can see that that is picking up or gaining an electron on the reactant side, so that's a reduction. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got the same number of electrons on either side of both of the equations. We can see that we've got one electron in the oxidation and one electron in the reduction. What we can do is we can cancel those out as we're going to do a simultaneous equation. So we rewrite this to write the overall redox, and I always do top, bottom, top, bottom. So on the top equation, I've got Li solid on the left-hand side of the equation. On the bottom, I've got Ag plus aqueous. Arrow goes to Li positive aqueous and Ag solid. This is the overall redox equation. Example number two, we're going to do copper and sodium. First thing we have to do is identify the positions in the electrochemical series. Remember, top one flips, bottom one stays the same. So the oxidation, we would have Na solid going to Na plus aqueous plus an electron. And the reduction is Cu2 plus aqueous plus two electrons goes to Cu solid. Now remember, we want to cancel out the electrons, and the only way that we can do this is if we've got the same number on either equation. In the first equation, I've only got one, and in the second equation, I've got two. So what I want to do is multiply the whole equation of the oxidation by two. So that changes to 2Na solid, goes to 2Na plus aqueous, plus two electrons. We can now cancel out the electrons and rewrite our overall redox. 2Na solid plus Cu2 plus aqueous goes to 2Na plus aqueous plus Cu solid. Let's take magnesium and aluminium. So we have to identify the positions of these metals in the electrochemical series. And remember, the top one flips and the bottom one stays the same, which means we take the magnesium and we flip the whole equation, and that will be our oxidation and we copy exactly what it is in the data booklet for our reduction. Remember, we want to cancel out the electrons. In the first equation, I've only got two electrons, and in the reduction, I've got three electrons. So to make them the same, I'm going to have to multiply the top equation by three, so that becomes 3mg solid, goes to 3mg2+, plus, plus six electrons. The bottom equation, I'm going to have to multiply by 2. So that becomes 2Al3 plus aqueous plus 6 electrons goes to 2Al solid. We can now cancel out the electrons and we can write the overall redox. 3Mg solid plus 2Al3 plus aqueous goes to 3Mg2 plus aqueous plus 2Al solid. 
So here are some examples for you to have a go at. So if you want to pause the video, you can have a go. And when you're ready, the answers will pop up on the screen. Past paper questions from the National 5 2019 written 10b part 3. A student set up an electrochemical cell using solutions of iron 3 chloride and potassium iodide. Write the redox equation for the overall reaction. We're given two equations in beaker A and beaker B. I always like to write the oxidation which means the electrons will be found on the product side first. I then can identify my reduction as the electrons being on the reactant side. Now, if I look at equation one, I can see that I have two electrons and equation two, I've only got one electron. So to cancel them out, I need to multiply my reduction by two. So that becomes two Fe3 plus aqueous plus two electrons goes to two Fe2 plus aqueous. We can cancel out the electrons and then we can write the overall redox. Two I minus aqueous plus Fe3 plus aqueous goes to I2 liquid plus Fe2 plus aqueous. This past paper question is from the National 5 2017 written 10A part 2. A student set up an electrochemical cell using aluminium and copper electrodes as well as aluminium sulphate solution and copper 2 sulphate solution. The two reactions which take place in the cell are and they're given as an equation for aluminium and they're given as an equation for copper write the overall redox equation for the overall reaction. So when we write out the oxidation and reduction, we can see that the top equation's only got three electrons and the bottom equation's got two. So we need to cross multiply so that we've got the same number of electrons in both equations. For the oxidation, I'm going to multiply the whole equation by two. And for the reduction, I'm going to multiply the whole equation by three. The electrons can then cancel out and I can write my overall redox as 2Al solid plus 3Cu2 plus aqueous goes to 2Al3 plus aqueous plus 3Cu solid. This last past paper question is from the National 5 2016 written 10C part 1. Electricity can also be produced in a cell containing non-metals. The reactions occurring at each electrode are given in beaker A and beaker B. Name the type of chemical reaction taking place in beaker B. What we can see is that in beaker B, the electrons are found on the product side, which means they are losing the electrons, which means the type of reaction taking place in beaker B is oxidation.